So hi everyone, my name is Shach and I recently finished my master's studies in Tel Aviv University. And today I'll be talking about my thesis, which was done uh, under the supervision of professors David Mendlovich and Raja Juris, um, with the funding of Ramot in Tel Aviv University. And the subject is um, light field refocusing based on sparse angular information. So I will start with a short introduction about light field photography. So uh, regular cameras only uh, record um, the total amount of light that intersects with each pixel on the sensor. And therefore they get only uh, spatial information of a scene. Um, light field, photo light field uh, <laughs> cameras uh, record the direction and intensity of each light ray that intersects with the sensor. And therefore uh, they get spatial information and angular information of the same scene. Um, a single light field image can be represented by a 4D tensor. And we can look at it as a series of RGB images that are arranged on a rectangular grid. And each one of them is taken from a slightly different angle. Um, this is an example of a 5x5 five five, uh, angular resolution. And each one of these images um, has a spatial resolution of m by n by 3, because this is uh, a color image. And the spatial coordinates are x and y. Each one of these images is called a sub-aperture image. Um, so light field can be captured by Lightro camera. Uh, this is a camera with a micro lens array, and it captures uh, the multiple light rays. Oh, sorry. Um, it has two major drawbacks. One, it's a little bit clumsy. It's about this size. Um, and second one, there is a spatial angular trade-off resolution, and I will talk about it in a couple more slides. So what is light field good for? Um, the most well-known application is depth estimation. This is an example of a depth map, which can later be used for face recognition, gesture recognition, and so on. Um, there are several applications for the medical field and material recognition. And the application uh, which I was working on was post-capture refocusing. So the angular information enables us to change the focus plane after we capture the image. So after we already took the image, we can generate a series of images and each one uh, is focused on a different object. Okay, so this equation looks a little bit scary. I will just explain it. Um, basically, to get a refocused image, we need to take each one of the sub-aperture images that I showed earlier and shift it by a factor which is determined by two factors. One of them is alpha, the focus factor, um, and it tells us on which object we want to focus. And it is uh, the same factor for each one of the images. And the second one is the location of this specific sub-aperture image on the grid, because an image in this location will not be moved like an image in this location. And then we sum up the shifted images and we divide by the number of them. The problem with this equation is that it is continuous. And uh, we have, of course, a discrete number of sub-aperture images. So we will have to have as many images as possible in order for the results to look continuous to our eyes. And this means high angular information, a uh, resolution. The problem with this one is that in light field images, uh, light field cameras, there is a trade-off between spatial and, and angular information. Um, there is only one sensor, and it captures both of them. So if we uh, increase the, spatial, the angular resolution, we will pay for it with spatial resolution. So this is our motivation to be able to perform light field uh, applications based on sparse angular data only, and then we can increase the spatial information resolution in return. So let's talk about our method. We took four sub-aperture images, which considers very sparse. And we generated one refocused image at each uh, focus step. Um, so we first check what happens when we try to refocus an image using the basic algorithm we talked about before. Remember that I said it has to be continuous and as many as sub-aperture images. So we took each view, we moved it, we shifted it, and we summed them and divided them by four, and the results were bad. <laughs> um, you can really see the ghost in artifacts near the tree and the leaves over here. And note that when we increase the angular resolution, it looks a lot better. And we increase it to 17 by 17 views, the artifacts are almost gone, and it looks more smooth and continuous. 
So we want to get this result using this data. And how do we do it? By convolutional neural networks. So we took these four images, we shifted them according to the focus factor, and we inserted them to a neural network. We first had to generate the ground truth. So what we did was to take, we had a light field of 17 by 17 images to each uh, data image. Um, we only took 241 images of them. These are the blue images. Uh, to appear as close as can be to a uh, shape of the aperture of the camera, which is circular. Uh, the red uh, views are the four input views to the network. And so we took these 241 views and used the basic equation to get one refocused image for each data for each data point. Okay, this is the network architecture. It also looks a bit scary. Um, this is a fully convolutional network with two trajectories. The first trajectory goes through convolutions of tree by tree and ReLU. Um, and each one of these outputs go by another convolution of tree by tree. And those residual images are summed to one sum of residuals. And to this, we add the average of the sub aperture views, which I talked about in the beginning, to preserve the uh, areas in the image that we want to preserve. And the sum of residuals corrects the artifacts. So uh, results. These are the results on clean data. You can see that the networks correct the artifacts, and the results appear very much close to the ground truth images. These are two different focal points, uh, focus points. Um, we also train the network on noisy data using noise augmentation. So the network now had two missions. It had to refocus the image and clean the noise. And also you can see that the results are very good. Um, also if you use metric of PSNR or SSAM, you can see the change in numbers. Uh, who is familiar with this metric? Um, and that's it. We talked about a refocusing algorithm. We that can perform on sparse data. Um, the performance is near real time. It's 0.0 to 22 seconds on a GPU. Um, it has low memory consumption. And it opens the door for developing light field cameras with a lower angular resolution and spatial angular resolution in return. And that's it.